Of all the planets in the universe, Earth is the only one known to have water, air, and sunlight needed to create life. Mankind is fortunate to live on this planet, alongside millions of other living organisms. Song of Life, Biodiversity. As summer arrives in Taiwan's high mountains, everywhere, from rock cliffs to grassy plateaus, becomes a garden of many-hued flowers. Their dazzling colors seem to highlight the brevity of this beautiful season in high-altitude areas. Numerous organisms live in our forests. Whether broadleaf or pine, from giant trees to minute fungi and other living organisms, in Taiwan's rural areas, butterflies and bees work hard like the farmers around them, collecting nectar from high mountains to lowland plains, from forests to oceans. Millions of different species reveal their amazing life force and the incredible biological diversity of this planet. Biological diversity, or biodiversity as it is often known, affects our lives profoundly. The term includes genetic diversity, species diversity. And ecosystem diversity. Genetic diversity. What exactly is genetic diversity? Take roses for an example. All roses belong to the Rosaceae family, genus Rosa. They all belong to the same species, but their individual genetic makeup gives them flowers of different shapes. Colors, sizes, scents, and petal numbers, making each one unique and different. Early in 1970, paddy rice throughout Southeast Asia was inflicted with bacterial leaf blight, with loss of yields as high as 80 percent in some areas. When agrochemicals failed to stem the epidemic, biologists began searching for a solution through breeding. In the end, genes were isolated from several strains of a disease-resistant wild rice and bred into commercial rice, averting a major food crisis. But before that, who would have believed that the contribution of those lowly wild rice plants could be so great? It is impossible for us to concentrate every single favorable characteristic into just one strain of rice. Therefore. A much safer approach would be to maintain a wide range of rice types with different characteristics, thus protecting the genetic diversity of rice. Genetic diversity is the foundation of variability within a species. Different genetic combinations not only make individual organisms unique, they also decide how well equipped that particular species is to adapt and evolve. Within nature, species diversity. Let's look at species diversity next. A species is the basic unit in biological classification. In nature, a group of organisms sharing at least one stable common characteristic, the adults of which are capable of interbreeding and producing a new generation with reproductive capabilities. Is classed as a species. At present, around 1.8 million different species have been recorded throughout the world. Taiwan has a high level of biodiversity. On account of its unique physical and climatic environment, straddling the tropics and subtropics, it is particularly rich in plant resources. With more than 4,000 wild vascular plants and around 1,500 moss species, in addition, the island has more than 5,300 species of fungi. 
Of the animal species already discovered, Taiwan has around 80 species of terrestrial mammal, 500 species of birds, more than 80 reptiles, over 35 amphibians, and around 224 species of freshwater fish, as well as more than 18,000 named species of insect. Although Taiwan accounts for only 0.024% of the world's total land area, its biological diversity is extremely high, having around 1.9% of all known species in the world. Of course, there are still many species that we do not even know about. Ecosystem Diversity Next, let's talk about ecosystem diversity. An ecosystem is a complex grouping of plants, animals, and microorganisms that interact with each other and their non-living environment. Our planet has a range of different ecosystems, including forests and woodland, grasslands and savannas, deserts, rivers, lakes, wetlands, and coral reef environments which provide different habitats for various species. None of these ecosystems is the same and all are irreplaceable. Most people consider wetlands as useless wasteland but, according to research, almost two-thirds of global fishery resources come from coastal wetlands. Taking mangrove wetlands as an example, mangroves maintain water quality, regulate climate, and stabilize shorelines. They also provide a habitat to fish, shrimp, and crustaceans. These small aquatic species constitute the main food of larger fish and bird species, creating a complex and diverse food chain. This makes mangroves one of the most productive ecosystems on the planet. We have to remember that the biggest beneficiary of this biodiversity is man himself. All the food, grains, fish, meat, fruits and vegetables, our clothing, medicines, and materials used in building and manufacturing most come from different species. Even the petroleum and coal used by automobiles and factories comes from organic matter left by ancient species. According to statistics, the direct economic value of biodiversity accounts for 40 to 50 percent of the world economy. Taking the pharmaceutical industry as an example, 40 billion US dollars is founded on just 40 or so plant species. Many well-known medicines originated from plants. The indirect value of biodiversity which cannot be calculated in economic terms, is even higher. How can you calculate the services provided by the worms that aerate our soil, making it fertile? Or the microorganisms that feed on and decompose our rubbish and sewer waste? Or the insects that help pollinate the many different crops we grow? Biodiversity is inextricably linked to mankind. Our sustained existence and survival depend on biological diversity. But uncontrolled human consumption and economic greed have already caused hundreds of species to become extinct, and species loss is still continuing at an alarming rate. 300 years ago, Formosan Sika deer were seen throughout Taiwan. Their mass slaughter began during the Dutch occupation of Taiwan in the 18th century. Every year, an average of 10,000 deer skins were exported. 
Since then, the killing spree has never stopped. In 1969, the last wild Sika deer was killed in the east of Taiwan. Since then, the species has been extinct in the wild in Taiwan. The Kanahira azalea was once found along the banks of Beishu Creek in North Taiwan. Construction of Fatesway Reservoir destroyed its entire habitat, and the species is now also extinct in the wild. Species extinction is not limited to Taiwan. Similar tragedies continue to take place all over the world. In the past 50 years, the world's population has jumped from 2.5 billion to over 6 billion. If man continues to clear land, hunt, pick wild plants, pollute, and introduce exotic species without restriction, our planet's environment and resources will face an unprecedented crisis. The present rate of global species loss is around 1,000 species per year. This is 500 to 1,000 times faster than the rate of extinction caused by natural selection. To prevent further loss of genetic resources, species, and habitats and ecosystems, in 1992, the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, held in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, passed the Convention on Biological Diversity. The main goal of the convention is to unite the efforts of contracting parties to promote and implement three primary objectives. Firstly, the conservation of biological diversity. Secondly, the sustainable use of biodiversity and its components. And thirdly, the fair and equitable sharing of the benefits arising from the utilization of genetic resources. Although not a party to the convention, in 2001, Taiwan's Executive Yuan passed a National Biodiversity Action Plan in which national objectives and implementation strategies were clearly outlined to promote relevant conservation projects. Of the more than 300,000 plant species on Earth, man only uses around 30 of these as staple food crops to feed 95% of the world's population. Our diets include only around 100 species, when there are at least 60,000 species available that are edible to man. The maize grown and eaten by people all over the world came from the wisdom of Mexico's indigenous people. Coffee that was first drunk by ethnic Ethiopians is now a symbol of modern civilization throughout the world. Other commodities like rubber, tea, and sugarcane once only known by isolated communities, have now become indispensable parts of human life. In other words, the things that seem ordinary or useless to us today may be the future potential of tomorrow. Things that were not used yesterday may be used today, and things that are not used today may find a use in the future. The conservation of species for use by future generations is the greatest gift we can give our children and grandchildren. Through developments in gene research and biotechnology, genetic diversity may hold the keys to serving as the cornerstone for developing new breeds and materials, as well as to finding new drugs to combat liver disease, cancer, and AIDS in the future. But let's not forget that all of nature's species, whether useful to humans or not, have their own intrinsic value and right to exist. As we enjoy the resources and services provided by biological diversity, let us be thankful. Let us also realize that we have a grave duty to preserve biological diversity in order to guarantee the future sustainable existence of all life on earth.